Hello, and as always, thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight I have a very special case for you, something that's very important to me, and a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time, and I'm happy that I'm now getting the chance to do so. Tammy Zawicki was like any other college student her age. She was bright, beautiful, with an entire lifetime of possibilities ahead of her. Her strong family ties and interest in sports and passion in photography it seemed to be leading her towards a bright and rewarding future. Tragically, her potential would never be realized, as her life was cut senselessly short during an ill-fated road trip in 1992. And despite the decades of searching and leads since then, nobody has been able to solve the mystery of who killed Tammy Zawicki. In many countries, the month of August represents the end of summer and the beginning of the second half of the year. Schools and universities across the country begin preparing for the new school year, as both students and graduates begin preparing for the next stages of their lives. Grinnell College, located in Grinnell, Iowa, has ranked amongst the best liberal arts colleges in the country throughout the years, and is the alma mater for famed figures such as jazz musician Herbie Hancock and Intel co-founder Robert Noyce. Tammy Zawicki, born in Pleasant Hill, Pennsylvania, was the only daughter of three children and was by all accounts a well-adjusted family girl. A member of her college's soccer club, Tammy was also an art history and Spanish major with dreams of becoming a sports photographer after college. In the summer of 1992, Tammy had spent six months studying abroad and enjoying life in Madrid, Spain, and was excited about her prospects for the coming senior year. She had just landed an internship at the Art Institute of Chicago that would last from September until December of that year. The stars had aligned for Tammy, and her life was only just beginning. That is, until the day that the Zwicky family was tragically changed forever. August 22nd, 1992, began like any other day for the Zwickys. Tammy and her young brother Darren bid farewell to their parents in Pittsburgh before embarking on a long country drive to their respective colleges. The first stop would be Darren's College in Evanston, Illinois, right outside Chicago. Tammy stayed overnight in Evanston before leaving for Grinnell College the next day at 1pm. This would be the last time that her family would ever hear from Tammy. When Tammy failed to check in with her mother Joanne the next day, knowing something was wrong, Joanne called the Illinois State Police. At around 5 p.m., state troopers found Tammy's car abandoned alongside Interstate 80 in central Illinois, at mile marker 83. Tammy's belongings, such as her clothing, were still inside the car, but a few items such as a musical watch and Tammy's personal 35mm Canon camera were missing, and to this day have not been recovered. Tammy may or may not have also been in possession of a soccer team patch that was not recovered amongst her belongings. The search began almost immediately, and Tammy's car was towed away as evidence on the 24th, the same day that Joanne called the state police to report her daughter missing. Eyewitness reports revealed the last time Tammy was seen alive was sometime between 1 to 4 p.m. alongside Interstate 80. She appeared to be having car trouble of some sort, and an as-of-today unidentified male driving a tractor-trailer was seen assisting her. This man was reported to be in his mid to late 30s, Caucasian, six foot tall with dark and bushy hair. The state police responded swiftly by deploying canine units and helicopters to search the area surrounding Interstate 80, but all came up empty. Area locals as well as residents in Grinnell, Iowa organized search parties and packed the streets day and night looking for Tammy. 
but unfortunately, it would all be for nothing. On September 1st, police recovered the body of a young female alongside Interstate 44 in rural Lawrence County, Missouri, almost 500 miles away from where Tammy's car had been recovered. Dental records confirmed the worst possible outcome, that the body was indeed that of 21-year-old Tammy Zawicki. Tammy had been stabbed eight times, once in the arm and seven times around the heart in an almost circular fashion. Worst of all, Tammy's body exhibited signs of severe sexual trauma as well as other physical abuse. That month, the FBI set up a 14-member team to investigate the case. Right from the very beginning, the case was plagued with many false leads and dead ends. The first promising lead came from a truck driver who claimed that he and his friend had both seen a young woman resembling Tammy's description getting inside a gray Chevy celebrity with Nebraska license plates. This lead unfortunately led to a dead end, but the next suspect was not too far behind him. An anonymous female witness came forward to report that she had seen a man in a green pickup truck alongside Interstate 80 who had appeared to be assisting a woman resembling Tammy Zawicki with her car. Later on after the disappearance, the woman reported seeing the man again, this time in her doctor's office with his wife. The man, identified as Lonnie Beerbrot, was known to police as a violent career criminal who had only just been released after serving two concurrent prison sentences for armed robbery and attempted murder. Most damningly, the female witness reported that Lonnie's wife had been sporting a musical watch that was similar to the watch reported missing from Tammy's belongings. The wife had told the female witness that her husband had given her the watch, but when later questioned by police, the wife denied it while also telling the police that she could not provide a solid alibi for her husband on the day of the murder. This all seemed to paint a very black and white picture of what happened, at least to investigators. But when Lonnie was cooperative with investigators and willingly supplied hair and DNA samples, this promising lead fizzled out. Only weeks later, the FBI disbanded their investigative team handling the case in February of 1993, citing a lack of evidence and progress. From there, Tammy's case sadly slipped from public view and eventually went cold. Many leads and promising suspects have come forward in the years since, but all of which have been cleared. For many investigators and true crime gurus, Tammy's case bears all of the expected hallmarks of a serial killing and so some have looked for similarities to other crimes and serial killers that were known to operate in the area Tammy was last seen. Of these, one of the most promising suspects was convicted serial killer Robert Mendelhall. Mendelhall, a truck driver, was arrested in 2007 for the murder of security guard Sarah Holbert. While searching his truck for evidence, blood belonging to several other women, as long as other pieces of evidence were collected, and tied him to the murders of several women in the area. Mendelhall was initially cooperative with police and confessed to other murders, though these attacks eventually broke down and Robert refused to cooperate any further. Mendelhall is currently serving a life sentence and is still under investigation for murders in Georgia, Illinois, Texas, New Mexico, Alabama, Indiana, Tennessee, and Oklahoma. Investigators noted similarities to the Tammy Zawicki case and initially reported that they would be looking into any connections, including a police sketch of a vehicle last seen with Tammy that matched a vehicle belonging to Mendelhall. But since then, no further connections or evidence linking Robert Mendelhall to the case have come forward. The most recent development came in May of 2020, when Illinois police arrested suspected serial killer Clark Perry Baldwin for the murders of three women. Both Iowa and Illinois police stated that they would be looking into any connections Baldwin may have had to Tammy and the other unsolved murders in the area. Sadly, only one day later, this story was retracted by a Chicago news team, and no further updates connecting Baldwin to the Tammy Zawicki case have come forward. Suspects and leads continue to pour in, and the FBI and local law enforcement have both stated that the case remains open and that they are dedicated to finding clues no matter how long it takes. Time, however, takes its own toll, and the loss of Tammy is still felt to this day almost 30 years later. Tammy's family still mourns her and hope for the day that they can finally have closure. Tammy's college and friends still remember her fondly and the promising future that she could have had. I first discovered this case 10 years ago doing a high school biology lesson in forensic science. Our teacher had given us all cases, real life murder cases, and after we were done with the lesson, we discovered what happened to them. I had been really upset and saddened to know that Tammy's case remained unsolved after the lesson was over. 
Ten years later, we've sadly come no further. The well of leads have almost dried up, and the evidence has been lost to time forever. I can't even imagine and comprehend the pain that the Zawicki family has experienced over these years. To Tammy's mother, Joanne, and her brothers, you have my sincerest sympathies and hopes and prayers that eventually one day you'll find the peace that you so desperately deserve. To anybody out there tonight watching this, any viewers, please share this with anybody that you can. I'll provide links to the FBI's watch site on this case, as well as to the phone numbers for the tip line. This is the worst kind of miscarriage of justice, that this crime has remained unsolved for so long, and that this monster has not been caught yet and has not been held responsible for the pain that he has inflicted on this family. If anybody out there knows something, I implore you to please turn it into the police. To everyone out there watching tonight, take no one for granted. Cherish every single moment with those you love like it is the last time you will ever see them. Because there will come a day when you will see them for the last time. And then they will be gone forever. If you or anyone you know have any information regarding the murder of Tammy Zawicki, the FBI is offering a $50,000 reward for anybody who can turn in a tip that leads to an arrest. As always, thank you for joining me for this very special moment. I enjoyed sharing this case with you, and I hope that some good can lead to all of this pain. As always, you guys, please stay safe. Take good care of yourselves tonight. And I will see you all again on the next Full Moon Fable.